Real quick before we get started, we have a really cool new game we want to tell you about. Bullets and Teeth and Aliens is a co-op sci-fi card game for two to five players. Your goal is to work together, blast space bugs, and get paid. In the game, the Science Corporation discovered aliens on Mars, but unfortunately, the Martian life does not ally with the psycho corporate vision. So it's up to you and your friends to work together and fight back against alien space bugs, obtain powerful upgrades, and earn your paycheck. This campaign is going on now through November 14th, 2020. So use our link in the description below to get your copy of Bullets and Teeth and Aliens. Let's get into the podcast. This podcast is brought to you in part by Dragon Shield. Use code play to win 5 at the affiliate link down below for 5% off to help support the show. Welcome to the play to win podcast where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. And I'm Dylan. This week we are talking about magic conventions magic con las vegas is coming up we're talking about what to expect at conventions maybe a little bit of what to expect specifically at vegas but just generalize what to expect at magic cons exactly yeah these are very fun events that are kind of like the greatest gathering of magic players that you can find now the true important part of magic the gathering exactly yeah and there's so much fun stuff going on so uh we kind of want to talk about what we're excited for about vegas and all the other upcoming magic events that are going to be happening in 2025 too first up I, for me in my brain i think we should go what in preparation Con- conventions Ooh, coming preparation, up what, yeah. do you, what do you bring into the convention this is That's good that we're talking part. about this now because normally i'm doing this stuff the night before we leave yeah i'm talking to myself as i pace around what yeah. what should i bring to the convention this isn't so, for you guys yeah, this, this is, is for us, us. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right for me i normally bring f- fewer decks than i initially want to bring yeah you, for i for, i like to stick on a deck and just really glue to it and play a lot of games in a row with it but even if not there's so much stuff going on it's really just hard to get in a variety of different games so for me i try to bring fewer decks than i actually think i should so this time i'm bringing two decks just i think that's a good call i'm bringing two as well normally two cedh two cedh yeah normally i max out at three cedh decks and even if i have four like i'm picking the three that i know that i want to play that weekend like i just made upgrades to these so i know that we specifically are trying to get as many games in as possible yeah all right, so I, the, the moment that I said that, though, I had a second thought. The bucket thing, the tier thing. They're trying oh, to yeah. bring that out in Vegas. It would be a bummer to not have any decks that could compete at any of those bucket levels. And then I would like, I don't want to buy a pre-con deck that's just playing that, but it, there might be something. Or should I just say, no, we're sticking to CDH. We play CDH, that's what it is. I'm only interested in playing CDH, CDH during yeah. the weekend. So if you find a bucket event that's great i'm gonna go play cedh part of me wants to bring astor it's a deck that i don't even have a deck list for yet but it's a casual deck that i've been really enjoying so maybe i'll bring three decks maybe i'll bring astor just as a casual option but even that is probably regrettable maybe i shouldn't do that part of my preparation is that i want to make sure that my backpack that i'm carrying around with me all weekend is light yes also i have a lot of magic cards if something happens to my bag and travels or something or if i lose a deck somewhere i don't want the entirety of my collection to go away that's at true at least i can come home to something that i can cry with in bed <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's very fair i also with the light backpack thing i also think it's good to leave some extra space in your backpack when you pack because at these conventions there's tons of vendors there's tons of artists there's tons of giveaways and other stuff you want like room to put stuff in your backpack yeah you're you're not gonna go home with just the stuff that you came with right yeah so if you come into the convention with a jam-packed backpack all the stuff that you get you have to hold in your hands and then it stacks up and it's too much and And then then the flight attendants is like sir you need to check that bag (laughs) right yeah so leaving some extra room i think is good so that you can get some new stuff yeah exactly so that's why we only bring two decks and i like to only really only bring cedh decks because that's kind of what i'm really trying to play yeah so then I also only one play mat. Only one play mat, yeah. A smallest amount of dice as possible. This is what I'm bringing. Oh, yeah, show me. These here. Oh, that's all you need. I'm yeah. bringing just these. This one is actually, I, I don't play Sisse anymore. So this plus one, plus one counter that I used to represent how big Sisse was, that one's coming out of there. I like to leave a little space in the dice so that I can put my finger in and take one out. I love that. You know yeah. what I mean? Just easy access. Because then they're all in there like that. You go... 
I have. I sorry. I have to. I have to follow them all. Fall out. No. 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 So I'm bringing these. These I have two colors of each of the colors. So two blue, two green, two red, two black, two white. Oh, that's perfect to keep track of your mana. Use a mana if I don't want to use something else. This is a great ASMR episode. Oh yeah. All, <laughs> these, all these by the microphone. That's probably pretty good too. Uh, and then these are just like the casino dice. These actually were given to me by Baby Jeebus, our patron. Isn't that fun? But I just I think they're so cool. Like the casino dice. They're very sharp and pointy. So I, I use these also. But these are the only dice I'm bringing. Nothing else. Yeah. I have like a little tiny bag of dice that I will be bringing. Um, and I have a one box of tokens. I will be bringing that's basically like all my CEDH tokens plus some other stuff that might come up kind of tokens I have this this is also is like a dragon shield ad. this is a dragon shield box <laughs> yeah. this is also the other thing that I bring this is just like extra tokens a little box of just extra ones in here first you'll find Raichu oh I love that yeah I was gonna hopefully use it for like an energy counter if I ever need it for like an energy counter anyway also the gone boxes for stuff I'm trying to get rid of or just extra stuff I get an extra pack of sleeve extra pack of inner sleeves and then this extra slot, which is just like tokens that I can give out to people and stuff like that. Yeah. The extra box. I bring even less tokens with me. I have one box of tokens that just has all of mine in. It's that's just everything. Like, yeah, that's just everything. And I just put those bleach cards that I opened in Ooh. there too. So I'm very excited to use them as tokens. Do you have anyone in mind specifically for a token that you'll use out of those oh, cards that you opened? Oh, that's a great question. Um, uh, No. No. Okay. No, I don't. There's a couple of them that are characters you haven't seen in the anime yet. So I don't want to use them. So I know I want to use like the and Pachi that I have and the Yamamoto that I have, but there's a couple others that I, I'll hold back on until you see them. Okay, so besides magic stuff to bring, we talked about what as far as decks, as few as possible, two to three I think is probably a safe number. Oh, the other magic things that you should bring, things that you might want to get signed. Oh yeah, That could be any specific card, it could be a play magic, just like keeping an eye out for things that maybe you want a, an artist to sign or maybe like your favorite creator that you know is going to be at the event that you want them to sign. You just, you can get you can get them signed, and that's uh, bring a Sharpie with you, too, if you want. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a good call. Um, just think, you can look at a lot of the websites. A lot of times they'll have listed all the artists and creators that are going to be there, so you can kind of pick and choose from your collection which ones you want to bring. That's a good call. Yeah, bring that stuff, too. Yeah, that's true. And then as few dice as possible, as few playmates, as few stuff as possible. That's my. I mean, obviously, you don't have to listen to my advice. This is just our personal stuff. This is just what we do, but well, we this like is, to pack as little as possible. This next part you have to listen to. Okay. You have to bring clothes, different clothes for every day. Oh, yeah. You can wear the same sweatshirt if you want that's okay that's excusable or the same pair of jeans that's also excusable but so long as you're also bringing deodorant with you and you're also doing everything you can because it's going to smell no yeah. matter what there's a lot of people there's a lot find of people. In one area focus on your hygiene a little bit make sure you bring your toothbrush and your toothpaste exactly that's yeah, just do travel that too. advice just overall travel advice 100 percent. every hotel has them too dress for different types of weather you don't know if the convention is going to blast the ac or there's going to be none at all so shorts and pants i think are normally good again it is normally warm to go along Along with the smell, that the warmness also coincides with that too. So that's something to also consider as well. This time in particular, we're in Vegas, but sometimes we're in Chicago in February. So there's a lot of a lot of different stuff to consider. Yeah, yeah. In Vegas, how what is the weather like in Vegas in October? Probably a little chilly. I no? mean, it's a, it's a desert. It wasn't it wasn't cold. I will be bringing pants, but I think I recall wearing shorts the entire time last year. Okay, and it was around the same time of year. Right? Around the same time of year. Luckily, the convention is inside and we play magic inside and the food is inside the bagel place is inside yeah so uh <laughs> that's really all that we need it's yeah. really just the walk from our hotel to the convention center I, I prefer an elastic band to jeans anyway since working from home i so rarely wear denim anymore Ooh. i wore jeans for the first time last night in a long time because it's getting colder yeah ass experience you know what? i'm in jeans right now because it's actually pretty cold and i was wearing jeans yesterday yeah they actually feel really comfortable and i think that's because because I just went six months wearing nothing but elastic pants. Yeah. And now I, I feel like just something different feels okay. I think for me, I probably just gained five pounds and now my jeans are tight. That could also be it. That's yeah, probably what it is. Be it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what else should we prepare for? What else should we bring? Yeah. Besides magic stuff. I bring clothes and magic stuff and... I don't bring anything. What else am I going to bring? For I'm, me, bottle. I like a reusable bottle if I can remember oh, to bring water? it so you can have water at all times. Oh, that's a great idea. Especially I in never Vegas. remember that. Yeah. yeah, I think it's good to just make sure you have water on you because sometimes you go long stretches without eating, which is fine. It's great. You're playing magic. But if you go six hours without drinking water, you might get a little, a little dry and parched in the desert, you know? Oh, uh, you need to remember to bring 
pants with zippers and your glasses straps so that you can ride the roller coasters that are yes. in whatever area you're in. I believe too. we almost forgot that. We Absolutely. almost forgot yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. When you're going to MagicCon, you also have to prepare for roller coasters because you will be going with someone who wants to go to the roller coasters. Exactly. Yeah. So you go a day early and hit up all of the credits that you don't have because that's if you're gonna travel, you might as well kill two birds with one stone. What roller coasters are we going to this time? I want to go to the Adventure Dome because I think that will knock off the most number of new coasters. Uh, but there is an iconic coaster in Vegas too called the Big Apple Coaster that I would love if we could get to as well. So we have two. We have two places to go. Two places. How many coasters at each place? One coaster at the one place. That's just the Big Apple Coaster, I think. And then the Adventure Dome. Oh, I don't know. How many coasters do you How think? How many credits could we get? Because we'll get all. You'll get all of them. I will be probably in the arcade after the first one because my tummy feels a little bit sick. The Adventure Dome. Las Vegas, Nevada only has two coasters. Only two. I could probably do two. Only two, two yeah. I could probably do two. There's a... Last time we went to the Air Force One and I went through it twice and I was like, okay, thanks. That's enough. And you're like, <laughs> okay, just six more times for me. I'll be right back. Uh, and you, yeah. Yeah, we kept on going through it. Yeah. We usually, I, I think it, we after that break that we took, we should have tried to get you those other two credits because the kitty credit, you would have been totally fine with. And the other ride that they had just had some janky turns that would have messed up your back and legs a little bit. And but that's, that's all. Fine. Yeah. For me, that's not worth it. But for you, I'm so glad you had fun. Oh, I'm happy I had that one. Yeah. So we'll have Canyon Blaster to ride. <laughs> It's a funny name. Canyon it's a Blaster. Great Canyon Blaster. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. That's a that's a looping coaster. That's an arrow looping coaster. And then we'll have El Loco to ride. Oh. What is this thing? I don't really know this thing. This is an S and S machine. What is an S and S machine? Oh boy, I'm looking forward to this. It actually looks pretty interesting. What's an S and S machine? Is that, uh, is that a brand? S and S Worldwide is the name of the company. It actually it's it's got yellow track. That's too, look at this. It actually looks pretty cool. That kind of looks like Bionicles. I think because of the background, because the ceiling with this it. This is Bionicles. That we like we, we got to get you on Bionicles. Would we, be, would we yeah. have fun in the same way that I would have fun with Bionicle toys? I, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, then I'll, great, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> so do much it. Fun. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so that's. Basically, it doesn't have to be whatever your roller coasters is, basically, <laughs> right? Like you don't have to go to these roller coasters. You don't, like you yeah, just have to go to well, roller even, coasters. Even if like like my mom's roller coasters is church churches, right? So like oh, whenever so she travels, church. she okay. wants to go like see whatever church is around. Right? I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So like it, it doesn't have to be roller coasters. For me, it's like vegan food. If I can yeah, find a vegan like, restaurant, whatever or something. your roller coasters is, make sure that you plan around that so that you can include that as part of your overall experience yeah. of not just magic. Con, but you're traveling like make sure you go do something too yeah i think that's a good call yeah do something and especially like going out to eat with friends that can always be a good one that a situation that can come up a lot but very true like for me like finding a good vegan spot is definitely it that's that's a good point do something non-magic just in case you're losing too you know <laughs> yeah, well I mean, at least the roller coaster was fun as hell yeah you know? right? i don't care what happened yeah, yeah at least i came home with like this other experience too yeah, yeah great yeah exactly so that's what i would say that's what you should prepare for that's what you should be prepared for be prepared to do and then when you get there there is so much that you can do that it's overwhelming yeah the main things that stick out to me first off when you get to the actual convention as options to do are one go to the command zone and play commander with people let's stop there and let's talk about that yeah because that's exactly what we want to do every time exactly yeah our goal our personal goal is always to play as many games as possible and that's because we're kind of fortunate enough to be able to go to all these so like we'll We'll always have time to like see an artist at another one that's just like kind of part of our job as we run into the same people a lot of the time yeah i want to see what everyone's playing i want to see what everyone's doing in commander and cdh yeah exactly it's really the best way for us to be able to kind of connect to the meta a little bit more and not just like through the tournament meta but just like kind of see what else people are doing out there yeah i agree and it's a good way to just say hi to everyone just like have a good time and like be involved i feel like in the command zone it's always packed there's always tons of people it's a great space to meet other commander players so that's my go-to right away. This time at Vegas, I'm trying to get 30 games in with Rogside. That's my goal. I want to come back, see how many games out of 30 I won. 30 games with Rogside sounds very daunting, but I'm very excited to do that. That's my main thing going in. Commander zone, command zone, playing magic. Yeah, I definitely I, I am with you right there. I definitely want to be playing as much magic as I can and then kind of sprinkle in the rest of the stuff that they have too. Other stuff, vendors. So different stuff. I know this time there'll be Dragon Shield booth at Vegas. There's also other vendors for dice and sleeves and every type of type of accoutrement that you could possibly want for your magic stuff. Even things that you haven't thought that you would ever need. 
need. Right. Someone is there with this awesome accessory that you can get that it turns out is like life changing for you. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There's tons of stuff like that, which and it's super fun to just like wander through and just see what the newest stuff is because there's always new ideas, new counters that are made out of metal and new stuff made out of wood and all this different creative shit. There's like there's just the artistry is so this sounds so there's, there's just so much artistry in magic even without just the artists themselves but with like the vendors too there's just so much cool stuff to see yeah exactly we'll be hanging out at the dragon shield booth quite a bit over vegas too they'll have a spot that we'll be able to play some games in as well so if you haven't caught us there in the command zone to play games we'll be at the dragon shield booth to play games too yeah friday afternoon specifically we will definitely be at the dragon shield booth all afternoon and then probably throughout the weekend as well we'll be back there too I think. yeah i think our twitter will keep us we'll keep everyone updated about it Yes. And we'll probably be posting stuff on Discord, too. I agree. Yes, that sounds great. We'll do that. So if you want to keep up, Twitter, Discord, specifically Discord, we'll make sure that we mention Mostly there Discord, where we yeah. are. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not Twitter. You can get on our Discord by joining our Patreon for a dollar. Mostly mostly Discord. Mostly Discord. Yeah, I might cut the part about Twitter, but... It's okay. not even called Twitter, so, you know, they might, they don't know what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, that's true. This is very <laughs> cryptic. It's my weird code name for another unnamed social media service that we use. Besides vendors, there's also a ton of artists. I like to make sure that I look on the websites ahead of time to see which artists are there. Look their names up on Scryfall or Moxfield. Can you do this as well? On Moxfield, you can search by artists and figure out which cards are, are done by the artists that you like. Bring those cards extra with you so that you can get them signed. Did we mention that? In this? We did mention, we mentioned that, that, right? Here, yeah, yeah, we did mention that. Okay. Um, but yeah, artists are a big thing that I like to look out for at these conventions too. And they do a lot more than just sign cards. Cards. Yeah. They also have like a lot of their prints that are there that you can pick up too. Sometimes some of them even have like originals that are there for sale. I picked up this awesome glass ponder at one of them too. That uh, it came in a frame as well, which is really what made me get it. I love it so much. Yeah, you was also gotten like tokens and stuff too, right? Just like, like oh yeah, tokens. a lot of them have their own tokens and like for a while the. Fable of the Mirror Breaker original Wizards token was like eight dollars, and I didn't want to do that. You could just go to a Magic Con and pick one up for a dollar or two dollars from an artist. Support an artist, yeah, yeah, and it looks so much cooler than the original token, anyway, right? And then they also too, I again, I also got like glossy Bloodbraid Elf and Deathrite Shaman as well that I still need to get frames for to hang up in my office. You gotta show them on the screen if you can. I definitely will. Yeah, maybe okay. I'll have me in post. Nice holding them up like make it fancy though, you know. Like the image, make it like go in and out. Oh, go in and out. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to have a whole video of me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like that's that. superimposed here that's over on top idea. of us talking. Yeah. That's yeah. I'm good. I'm doing all kinds of crazy stuff right now. Oh, like in the editing, it's like, ooh, black and white. And it's the crazy colors. Oh, and yeah. And I'm upside down. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Nice. Show off your skills. Yeah. But the artist, the artist area is one of my favorite places. There is a couple of artists that have lines all of the time. There's a few people that you'll have to wait to get signatures from. Yeah. I know some of the artists, you can be waiting there like all day so you plan for that too that's another thing to prep for at these things besides all the greatness there's a lot of lines there's yeah. a lot of people at these things there's a lot, lot of, people. of people close up there's a lot of people close up a lot of lines uh be prepared for that i think there's gonna be a lot of there's 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 some shoulder rubbing at time you need there to get past is, some yeah. people and whatnot so however you want to prepare for that if you want to wear a mask at the event too i know that there's a lot of people that feel comfortable masking at the events you're more than welcome to do that too some other stuff to expect at the uh at the conventions panels there's tons of panels people a lot of panels there yeah yeah. creators artists tons of different people talking about tons of different shit there's panels with designers that will talk about sets that have recently come out and there's other times like games that they'll play like command zone has done live events at this one there's normally like spoilers too if i remember correctly they normally like show some new cards at these things right yeah they normally do show cards from upcoming sets which is i think kind of like the favorite thing to like get that like live in-person reaction with like the whole crowd ooing and eyeing over new cards I, that's so much fun to me the website has a list of all the panels if there's any that are interesting to you then you can i would certainly recommend checking them out because a lot of them can be fun we usually like to see if there's new cards that are spoiled but outside of that our goals are trying to get games in and we can catch up on the panel news on twitter and stuff later yeah yep 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 there's also bad food in the oh, convention center yeah. too there's bad food that's really expensive as well so maybe part of your planning is also like bringing snacks with you too yeah little nut bars protein bars stuff the, like that yeah. keep you going i think that's a good call yeah exactly for vegan food normally i'm eating french fries a lot of french fries and bagels Ooh, on the way yeah. there that's normally my main that's true 
yeah, that's true. There's not a lot of options. Um, there's also tables for paid events. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of different paid events that you can do. You can do seals and like pre-releases for new sets if that's coming up. There's drafts that you can do even outside of like the normal standard drafts. There's also mystery booster drafts that they have. Like now that mystery booster two is out currently, I'm sure that Vegas will have a bunch of those that you could do. Mystery booster two is already out in at uh, for events yeah is it i think yeah people have oh. gotten their hands on those yeah i know people have gotten their hands on them but i didn't know that it was like fully out out yet okay maybe i just don't understand this well because it's out at events one. it's only available it's at o- events okay that's the thing of it okay, yeah because like right. eventually mystery boosters became available at lgs's like but way after they were only available at events and that's kind of how it is right now for Mystery Boosters 2. I'm expecting them to be available for LGSs way down the line. Okay, understood. They'll also do, like, Chaos Drafts, too, yeah. which is really cool. I really like those. And Gavin Verhey always has these events at these events. <laughs> that was a stupid way to say this sentence. And Gavin Verhey has his own events at Magic Cons. Yeah. They're his own, like, uh, like kind of tournaments, I guess you could say. I, I don't know if tournament is really the right word, but, like— it's a tournament, right? It's a tournament, yeah, yeah, where you play with, like, play test cards in your sealed packs as well, too. And sometimes there's creators that have cards named after them. We don't, I don't think. To be honest with you, I'm going to be frank, that's not really my thing. Playing with, like, surprise, like, I like Magic because I've already seen the card. So playing with a whole bunch of cards that I've never seen truly would be, like, difficult for me, Honestly, I think. Honestly, the thing that gives me anxiety and information overload the most in Magic is opening my pre-release pack when i don't know the set very well other stuff there's other events modern uh, there's other tournaments like that too right they have like other formats tournaments and stuff there's all kinds of paid events you can get because a lot of the tickets that you can win from doing well at these events you can use towards getting prizes from the prize wall then too yes which is another little section there you can get like big blown up cards there and then how do you ship those home though because truthfully i don't know i think you throw them away you throw them away you take a picture with yourself and you're like all right housekeeping gets to take it home yeah it sounds expensive for me to ship i feel like that would cost a lot to like ship that whole thing i would only actively go for that the next time there's an event like in the philadelphia area and we're driving to it but what if it's tarmogoyf I would shit everyone's pants <laughs> just looking at it. <laughs> and then just not the, take it home? And then I would probably try to do what try I could to it. take it home. Yeah. But. I guess you just have to figure out a way. Maybe they help you out. I don't know. Maybe they'll help me out. That's always something that I've just always been curious about. I have no I idea. I, I don't know. We don't do the prize well very often because we just play the I command just play, zone the whole time. Yeah, and there's no one ever wants to give me prizes for playing CEDH pods with people normally. Right. Not yet. Maybe this time with the buckets and the tiers, maybe there'll be some and tier if, four If, if I'm being stuff. honest, I feel bad taking those prizes sometimes because yeah. i'm not there i'm in it for the prizes i'd rather just give them away yeah normally i feel like when we get like prize stuff like that we try to give it away to yeah, the people we're playing me, with or anything like that yeah if i wasn't a content creator i would be trying to snipe <laughs> tickets from everybody <laughs> the whole fucking event you figure out a way to be competitive about that oh a hundred percent yeah yeah, yeah. but n- that's that's not my goal for the event so I mean, our goal is to stuff. Play magic and play magic as yeah much as unless there's maybe a big tarmogorf card and then and then i'll i'll, I'll do like a National Treasure kind of heist and get it out. National Treasure is a great movie. Both of them are Oscar worthy, yeah. phenomenal. I, I feel like five years ago that would have been like a, a hot take of sorts. I feel like now everyone just understands that both National Treasures are incredible. Was there ever a third one? I think there was a show or something. Was there a National Treasure three? I don't know. I think there was. There might have been some after aftermath, but the first two for sure with Nicolas Cage were incredible. There was a National Treasure three. Was Nick Cage in it? With a Nick Cage, really. Yeah. So National Treasure came out in 2004. National Treasure 2 came out in 2007, it looks like. This movie, according to IMDb, oh, says the plot was unknown at this time. Here's some trivia. It, it never came out, apparently. It never That's came why, out. Yeah. That, wait, so there was a National Treasure 4, but there wasn't a National Treasure 3? I don't is that think there was me? a National Treasure 4. No, I think oh, okay. there was just two. Because the piece of trivia that IMDb has, this is the second non-magic database that we've <laughs> consulted today. Okay. This piece of trivia says that it has been stuck in development due to a script not being complete. Still. Since, since when? It says that it... Follows National Treasure from 2004, so okay. I'm gonna say <laughs> they've been working on it for 20 years. A long like, I don't time. know what happens next. We can't figure it out. <laughs> I'm sure Nick Cage would do that movie though. Oh yeah, I hope so. Ooh, there should be a National Treasure secret lair. That would be a cool one. Yo, I mean, they did a Tomb Raider one. Is that yeah. too close to? No, Tomb Raider's a whole video game franchise. There was a National Treasure video games, was there? What card do you think they would make the Declaration of Independence? Oh, that's such like a... if they, if they oh, did okay, it where they get... reskinned cards. Yeah. What card would be the Declaration of Independence? Well, I feel like the one from National Treasure would have to be something that makes a map. 
right? Not the Declaration of Independence. Didn't the Declaration have the map there in would like be lemon a, ink on oh, the back of it or something? Yeah. It would have to somehow make a map. Uh, I would it is. say that it should just be merchant scroll because that way it leads you to a blue instant. Uh maybe. Can you can and we do a can we map. do a quick search? Can you search one mana artifacts that make a map? Because I feel like it would be a small amount of mana. Or would it be very expensive? I feel like casting the Declaration of Independence wouldn't cost a lot, but activating it would cost a lot. All right, so artifacts that make maps. There's Expedition Map. Mm, no, it doesn't. Renegade Map. Does that make a map? The only artifact that makes a map is called Cartographer's Companion. It's a three mana two one, and when it enters, create a map. No, that's not it. I feel like the Declaration of Independence would be a rule of law that you could sacrifice to make a map token. I feel like it could just be Expedition Map, though, too. I guess. Because it, yeah. it goes and I mean, finds you a new land, and the new land that you find is... This America? Yeah, sure. like Mount Rushmore, and yeah. Mount Rushmore is like Gaia's Cradle. Okay, yeah, that's fair. What about Nicolas Cage's role? What's his name even in National I don't know. His name, Nicholas Cage. Uh, what is his name? I want to say Keanu, but that's not right. <laughs> that's like the opposite of his name. It would be one of the detectives, right? It would have to be one of the clue detectives reskinned over or something. Or he, I guess he's not technically a detective, but some sort of clue maker. One of the clusters. Dude, yeah, you're so far off. Do you want to know what his name is? <laughs> yeah. Benjamin Franklin Gates. <laughs> oh, right. That's like the whole thing of the yeah. movie. <laughs> Ben okay. Gates. Yeah. Ben Gates. Uh I would I think he'd be some sort of clooster, some sort of creature that makes a clue. That's kind of it. a clooster. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. And then the short shrimpy guy in that movie would be He makes um He also makes clues. He also makes clues. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I'm not good at this. Yeah. I'm not, I shouldn't be a magic card they, developer. <laughs> they all just make clues. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Final thoughts, convention, Las Vegas. What are you bringing this Las Vegas decks wise? I know we talked about you were only bringing a few decks, but specifically, which decks are you bringing? Yeah, I don't know because I know your goal is to get 30 games in with Rogsai, but I know that I'm also trying to transition from Jund Rograk into Rogsai. Can you imagine if the both of us, we just played with like, just with ourselves and two other people for 30 games, just double Rogsai people all day? Yeah, that's (laughs) the thing. So now I'm kind of like, do I just want to build another blue based deck? You really didn't like Thrasios Timna. I really didn't like Thrasios Tim then no I felt like the format for me has not slowed down and yeah. playing slow decks has not helped me part of me like still really wants to go fast but I don't think that there's a non rock rock blue deck that's going to go fast. Tim Necrom. You could just do the Tim Necrom. I could just do Tim Necrom. Tim Necrom has really still good. been doing really well. And yeah. just say I'm not going to cast Tim Necrom or Krom that much anymore. Yeah just try to go fast in the colors and just like use a little bit more creatures yeah and the original farm days timna was kind of like you're like oh shit i have to play timna because my whatever i did didn't work i think we're probably going back to that of like rather than leaning in on the early commanders you just like they're the backup plan i've been having such a hard time finding a new deck yeah this idea of mine to start fresh and anew and scrap all of my decks has turned out to be a lot harder than harder. i thought it was gonna be yeah you just you haven't found one that you're liking just yet no no not yet and there's a scenario where i'm like i'm currently on this jun rograk deck and i really like it like i'm having a lot of fun playing it there's scenarios where like if i was winning the game with Thassa's oracle demonic consultation that would have won me the game but because i had to win with either wither bloom chain of smog or like dual caster mage molten duplication no matter what there's a 2-2 creature involved that is liable to get hit by a swords to plow shares or uh, yesterday it got hit by a galvantic blast like <laughs> like there, it just opens up so many so many doors yeah that rograk has like these they're the fake doors. They're not there. That's his Oracle specifically. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Oracle that's his Oracle. Like, you just have so many cleaner ways to win the game. Like, your your main lines are a lot easier. It, your Underworld Breach lines, your Ad Nauseum lines are much easier to go through because a lot of times you only need to look for one card. But this is still a deck where I still need to find a couple too many cards in order to keep going. Like, Brain Freeze is... When you have Brain Underworld so Breach, good. yeah, when you have Underworld Breach, the only card you need to find then is Brain Freeze. One tutor a lot of the time in Rog Sai gets you to the win after you Necro or after you Ad Nause. Yeah. But if I don't have Chain of Smog in my hand or if I don't have Molten Duplication in my hand, I'm like, well, I need to not only like find that piece, but then I like I just feel like there's extra steps that I need yep. post Ad Nauseum, post 
necropotence yeah. that are easier to set up through Rogsai. Uh, you're not wrong. I think that's 100% right. And that's why the decks like Rogsai and Tim Necrom see a lot more play, probably. Yeah, and that's, the that, Gen that's why Jun's Rograk hasn't caught on. So, yeah, maybe I'll play Blue Farm. I feel like the end of every podcast ends with me saying, maybe I think I'll, I'll play, play this. Deck. And I put it together for the week. Yeah. And then I play it at Tuesday Night Locals. And I go, okay, that was either fun or not fun. And then we talk on the podcast again. And I go, you know, I'm going to build this. And yeah. Then change it all up it is a cycle but that's okay like that's what you're doing you said you want to take all your decks apart and try a bunch of different decks that's what we're doing you know, that is exactly what i'm yeah. doing i think blue farm to me fits your play style the most it allows you to go fast but it also, also gives you the protection of silence which i feel like you really like a lot is like having ways to just like make sure no one can interact anymore i do lean good. on that crutch very hard yeah like i just and that's okay it's not a crutch i think just like that's a play style that you want to make sure that you're good to go before you go for the win and i think blue farm allows for that but also gives you the opportunity to go for turn two if you really need to or at least you could build it so that it could i think that should be the deck that you go for i that's probably where i'll end up being all right back to the drawing board with <laughs> back to the drawing board i like the i like the drawing board a lot it's been fun are you just gonna bring the one then are you just gonna bring one day are you gonna try to bring two i would love to bring two i might end up bringing just the one cedh deck i'm definitely bringing rock i said i mentioned that a thousand times I'm definitely bringing rock uh, my second deck, I've gone back and forth. Should I bring Kona? Should I bail on Kona? Uh, the video that I think we either just posted or posted last week where Kona was in the gameplay, I had uh, turn one, Mana Crypt, Jeweled Lotus, Kona, no lands on a mulligan to four, which is hilarious because both of those cards are banned. And it's like the main reason that I was trying to work with that deck because you had those options and now they're gone. I tried to make it work. I've tried to add a little stuff. I'm losing my faith in Kona a little bit. Oh, I yeah. I don't know if I want to keep pushing. I don't really think it's a CDH deck. It's very fun. I just, I don't know that it's actually there and I don't know how much time I want to spend on cdh decks that aren't really cdh decks to be honest no it's in like that kind of weird cross between it's it's a commander that you're trying to make cedh when really it just exists in the high power it's space it's just like a very high power deck like all of the combos like kona is not part of them and you need at minimum like three cards sometimes four cards like that's just a lot to piece together and it's super fun it can be really strong at a casual table and it can win games of cdh it can win on turn three it's possible as i'm talking literally right now i'm figuring out it's just not really one i where, where i want to invest my time in cdh right right now with stuff banned i want to see like oh i want to it's reinvigorated me to try to like push cdh how do we make it more powerful and blood pot has been a deck that i like for a long time and it's been a favorite of mine and it's a deck that did kind of lose out on the stuff but it also i think it benefits from the format slowing down a little bit so if everyone is right and i'm wrong in thinking that rock size is still just busted and the format slows down maybe this is the time that blood pod can actually do something i love that it has a one card win condition so i think i'm going to put blood pod back together even though i just completely took it apart and put everything away i think i might put it back together and bring that for vegas too that's fair you know what i might do i might end up building blue farm and then also building rock thrash and just having both decks that just exist because that way i have my ad nauseum deck i have my rock rack deck and they can both exist in the same space i think that's a great idea because that's i feel like that's what you want you want the ability to go fast but i think specifically you want to test out more rock rack stuff i think that's more really what i want to yeah. do and yeah. i can't fault you because the little guy is fucking awesome yeah that's probably my favorite card in cdh right now to be honest is rock rack all right well i'm glad that we figured out what decks we're bringing I think this is perfect. We're excited. I'm excited for Vegas. I'm excited for Magic Cons. They're super fun. Me too. Yeah, they're, they're always a, a great time. I'm super excited to get to connect with the community a little bit more, see what else people have been working on post ban i think that's really what i'm most excited for is getting to see everyone what everyone's been cooking with after these bannings and seeing what the meta might actually be like outside of just like our local game store and all of us like getting <laughs> rock rack pilled all of a sudden yeah but. definitely uh if you're at this convention obviously please come up and say hi to us if you're at future magic conventions and we're at the convention please come up and say hi to us we'd love to talk to whoever that's it. Thanks so much for watching or listening. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Your boy Blue, Funko K, Sparky B, Insomnia, SC Phillip, Holden Groupie, Gecko21, Caleb Ritchie, Caleb Ritchie, Zach Hartley, Reactive, Sean in the Ice, Stormageddon, Luke Cook, Peter Stewart, Quora Wild, Uncle Butts, Nick Foles, Go to Nine, Qua J, Ahmed, Lauren Connell, and Baby G Bus. If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Thank you, Dragon Shield, for supporting the show. Use the code playtowin5 at our affiliate link down below to help support the show. Follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram for more content. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Connor Williams, Roy Turner, Orjan, Mystic Muffin Man, Jacob Bauer, Tyler Watson, Zachary Coulson, Tyler H., Mallcraft, Jabaha, Mace the Ace, Dalton Poteet, Hobo Ghost, Justin, Mansolo, Jacob Depp, Jan Wildfang, Thomas Bueno, and David Nelson. What are you looking for? Us on the MagicCon website. Oh, are we on it?
Probably not. There's a bunch of non-magic people who are just like famous from other areas of the internet that got spots on here. Who not us? <laughs> yeah. Like this, I didn't know this guy's name, but I've seen him appear in my shorts feed. Who is it? Brian David Gilbert. Not Brian David Marshall? Well, he's right next right to next Brian to David Marshall. Yeah. I don't know that, man. It's unfortunate now that I, I am going to have to say all three names to both of them every time I see them. Yeah. Because otherwise so. they'll say, are you talking to... Me, Brian David Marshall, or are you talking to him, Brian David Gilbert? Because you are going to call him just Brian David. That's why I'm so fucking confused. Hey, Brian David. Oh, me, Brian David, me, Marshall? Brian David G or Brian David M? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's like on The Bachelor when, like, they have to call Kelsey H and Kelsey C the whole <laughs> yeah. fucking season. Kelsey C, I've been loving this time I've been spending <laughs> yeah. with you. I can't wait to meet your parents, Kelsey, Kelsey C. Kelsey C. It sounds so <laughs> personal, right?